how's it going? I just wanted to check in with everybody. And um, I'm actually posted right now in front of the snow because it's been snowing for like the past two days. It's beautiful. Um, but I realized that something big is happening here pretty soon. It's been almost exactly one year since I retired from corporate for good and went out and just started my own business. And not only did I do that, <laughs> which is scary in itself, right? Um, I did it in the middle of COVID. It's it, like exactly when COVID hit. I'll never forget it. I literally put in my resignation to my boss, handed it over to him, and like a week later or something like that, everybody's talking about this virus. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Because I don't watch the news. I swear, if we got like hit by aliens or something, I would be the last person to know, okay? So I wasn't really keeping up with anything. I didn't know it was happening. And when I told everybody, yeah, I'm gonna move across across seas and live in another country and start my own business. And they're like, what, are you crazy? Do you know what's happening right now? And I'm like, yeah, I heard a little bit about it. <laughs> so um, I did it. I went ahead and um, I, I just went forward with it. And I have to say, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why I didn't freak out when uh, the virus hit. I guess maybe it's because of my training that I've had in the past, um, mindset training, emotional training. Maybe it's because of my faith in God. Um, maybe it's because a little bit of everything. But all I knew is that I was determined. And maybe that has something to do with it as well. I was so determined and stubborn a little bit and I just didn't want to let go of my dream. And those of you who've known me for a long time now, know that I've been an entrepreneur off and on for like, man, since 2008. I had my very first business in 2008 and I started out with um, reading books like The Richest Man in Babylon and things like that. And um, a friend had got me turned on to this. And so I'm starting to read these books and I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. I can start making money and being my own boss and I can become a millionaire. And I just got so excited about this whole concept. So I, t I asked myself, you know, what's the one thing I can do right now in the moment to make money? And it won't be the long-term thing, but what can I do right now just to put myself out there? And at that time was resume writing. Out of all the talents and skills, right, that I had. And the reason I went there is because I was really good at it. People had expressed like, hey, can you help me with your res my resume, that sort of thing. I was really good at interviews. Um, I, I move around, I used to move around a lot with my job because I was a contractor and I, I just liked the fact that I can move around and, and, and you know live in different cities and states and so doing that I had to interview a lot and so I built up a really great way to interview and really get the job, land the job on the first time around. So I took these skills that I had and I started sharing them with people and lo and behold I started my own resume and interview company. And so I had a few clients and it was doing well and nothing to write home about, you know, it was just different. But I remember dragging my daughter along, handing out flyers, or like literally, we went to got flyers made, we started passing them out. Those of you for in Texas know what an HEB is, but we're in the HEB parking lot and we're passing out these flyers. I'm all dressed to the T, like I want clients. I was dressed all nice professionally and here's my little one helping me hand out flyers and putting them on cars and things like that. That was my very first attempt at becoming an entrepreneur. And then of course, when things don't go exactly as you plan them to go, sometimes you get a little sad, you get a little depressed and emotional and you're like, you know, I'm just gonna put this aside for right now, just focus on what I have, which was my career at the time, engineering and design. I went to school for engineering and design back <laughs> In 1999, I believe it was. I graduated in 1999, so I started like in 98. It was one of those fast paced programs, something I could get into right away. And uh, that was what my career was. So that's what I stuck to. And so I had been in this, you know, design and engineering career for a while, but I knew I wanted something different, you know? And I think that's in all of us. We all kind of feel like we have this unlocked potential waiting to get out and it's not always found in what you're currently doing and, and sometimes what you're currently doing is fine, but then you wanna challenge yourself. You wanna put yourself out there, expand, right? And grow and you can't really do that a lot of times if you're stuck in the same position. And so that's where I had found myself and why I was venturing out, doing all of these different things. And uh, just a side note, when I was in college, my daughter had just been born by the way, guys. So she, my daughter was like, she was born at the end of 1997, October 21st, 1997, and um, I remember bringing her to school. I was 19 at the time, and I brought her to school in her little carrier, and I went to class. I, I actually had to bring her to school at one point. Um, 
I didn't have a car back then either. I had a little bicycle, <laughs> bicycle with a baby seat on it. Um, and to get back and forth, I would either ride my bike or I'd, I would get a ride from some friends or whatever. But um, it was definitely challenging back then. So when, I, <laughs> when I'm looking back at these things, like now I'm able to travel the world and I'm actually being able to do all these things. I look back at those moments, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that girl. Like, look how far she's come. It's crazy. So as I was venturing out and trying to figure out what really excited me, what I was really passionate about, I tried everything. Like I said, I started out with resume writing, but it didn't end there. Um, I went on to doing network marketing with a company called USANA, and then moved on to becoming a personal trainer. I started my own personal training company. I started working for Gems, uh, Gold's Gem, Bally's Gem, if you remember Bally's. Um, I had my own uh, company that I was running, and then on top of that, I went ahead and started working for Beachbody, which was one of my fave companies to work for, and I actually did pretty well. And of course, all these companies, all these experiences that I got to be a part of along the way, you know, um, I, I learned something out of every single one. And I was able to meet these amazing, extraordinary people like Jerry Krebs and Ray Cantu, Steph Cantu, um, just off the top of my head. <laughs> Those are the, like the people I really started out with. Um, Jerry Krebs was the one who taught me how to do a vision. He's the one who introduced me to the book, Think and Grow Rich, which now I'm actually leading a group with, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool. Um, so I remember him teaching me exactly how to do a vision, how to read it, how to put emotion behind it and make it real. Um, Ray Cantu and uh, Steph Cantu, I remember them challenging me to do more in my business, you know. Um, I remember making my very first cold sales call. Yes, I was like super young, early 20s, and I'm like, I'm on the phone and I'm, I'm trying to make a sale or get someone interested and whatever and I was just you know you guys see me as this like outgoing and energetic person but back then I was super quiet and just not as confident that comes with experience guys it comes with time but at that moment um, I was on the phone trying to get someone to buy into whatever I was selling and I was so quiet like a little mouse <laughs> so I was like yeah um can you, uh, yeah, or I'm, I've got this really cool product and I thought you might be interested and da 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 da. And the lady on the other end, I'll never forget, she, she was not mean at all, but she was firm. <laughs> she said, honey, if you're gonna do sales and business, um, you're gonna need to learn how to speak. You need to speak up. <laughs> so it was something along those lines. I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. But the thing is, guys, is that I didn't stop. It was embarrassing, it was awkward, uncomfortable even but I didn't allow it to stop me. And I think that kind of like really sets you apart as an entrepreneur is that if you're really truly passionate about what you wanna do or what you want, who you want to become, you're not gonna let anything stop you. Even an embarrassing moment, even a scary moment, a sad moment, a broken moment. Um, I think we learn to you know, just embrace those moments, <laughs> fight through them sometimes, cry through them sometimes, and just shake it off. <laughs> and then move on um, but yeah so I remember just growing up and learning how to do this stuff and being a single mom through all of this and um, I know I was married for a short period of time but I got divorced and it was a horrible divorce for me um, it really shook me and uh, it was just like you know going through those moments of divorce and going through those moments of learning about business and entrepreneurship and learning how to be a better mom and learning how to be a better worker and all these different things I mean, all those experiences are just a piece of the big puzzle. And if you take a step back and you look at that puzzle, you've got all these little pieces you're putting into place. And before you know it, it creates this beautiful picture, I guess is how I can put it. And so I've created, <laughs> it's amazing, I've created, I don't know, I'm not gonna cry, but I've created this amazing picture for myself. And it was because I had a vision for myself and because I knew there was more to life than just paying bills. That just sounded so defeating to me and so sad. And when I got that glimpse of entrepreneurship and I got that little seed planted inside, I just wanted it to grow. And a lot of times it wouldn't stop. Even though I put it to the side, a lot of times it was still there. And then so I'm so glad I made the leap at the beginning of 2020, despite all the craziness in the world to make this happen. And so now I get to inspire other people to do that. And so my, as I'm stepping back and looking at the pictures coming together in my puzzle here, this is what I get to hang out with. This is Scotland, right? I'm in Scotland. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but let's see if I can move the camera. It is 
absolutely gorgeous out. And like they said, um, you know, I'm living my dream. Are you living your dream <laughs> is what I wanna ask. Because if you're not, if you're too scared, frightened, if you're worried, um, not confident enough, that's all normal. And I want you to just embrace it. I'm going to encourage you and to challenge you just to embrace those emotions and to push through anyway and to make a plan for yourself. When you have a plan in place, it makes everything a lot less stressful and a lot less worrisome, believe me, okay? This is coming from a single mom who worked, I don't know how many hours I put in over a lifetime. I started working at 14 and then when I had my kid, it was just nonstop. I was going to school full time, working full time. I think in 2012, my CPA looked at me like I was crazy because I submitted three different businesses, <laughs> like W9s, whatever it was, two different W2s. And it's like, okay, I was like nonstop going. I had this drive in me that I just couldn't shut down. I just wanted more. And I think it, I know it started with my kid. It's like, okay, I come from a poor family. I didn't want her to be exposed to that. I wanted her to have better options and opportunities than me. And I wanted to set a great example that, hey, if you can dream it, you can do it. If you truly want it, you can get, you can make it happen. And I believe I did that. And my daughter is an amazing kid to this day. She's actually hanging out with me here in Scotland and she's got her, she's following her own dream. She's got her own dreams and she's unstoppable because she saw her mom go through hell sometimes, hell and high water. And you know, I still made it. As a matter of fact, she said, um, I asked her, I said, you know, what am I known for Jess? And she just says, you know what? You're the girl who never gives up. And that's exactly who I am. And everyone has their own story, but this is mine. And I'm so excited that I get to stand here today saying I didn't give up. Um, it might have not been the prettiest picture to look at sometimes. And I stuck my foot in my mouth several times. I did stupid stuff several times. And I'm still learning. Just this past couple of weeks, I've been crushing it in my business, which is amazing. January was lit. I got tons of new sales and clients. And in all the commotion, um, one of my clients, I wasn't as communicative is the word, I guess. I didn't, com my, my communication wasn't as strong as it could be. So I'm still learning how to communicate better. How can I deliver an amazing experience for my clients? So it might seem like, oh, Rebecca's got everything going for her. Well guys, I'm not the one who's just sitting by watching TV and making, like wishing and hoping things would go right. You guys don't see what's happening on behind the scenes. I'm literally sitting at that computer, figuring things out. I'm on the phone constantly. I'm teaming up with people. I'm doing collaborations over here and I'm doing events over here. Anything to generate that amazing momentum. That's where, that's where it all happens. That in that, that magical space of action meeting, habit meeting, consistency, <laughs> you know, meeting purpose and, and dream, dreams and vision and all of that. It just all comes together and know that I did not do this by myself. I give praise number one to God and number two to all my many mentors I've had over the years, thousands of books that I've read, hundreds of courses and seminars I've attended. Um, you can, you name it, I've done it. So it's not, I'm not self-made. Um, I'm self-driven, um, maybe I could say that because I have this vision that I will not give up on and no one will stand in my way and nothing will stand in my way to get there. Um, but yeah, you know, I did not get here by myself. So that means you don't have to either. Um, I'm here for you. I am a coach, a business coach, a health coach, you name it, I, I do it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my story. I just wanted to share a little bit about my journey because it's fascinating. It's crazy what you can accomplish. Um, that poor little 19 year old teenage, I can't, can you guys imagine that? A 19 year old just had a baby, no money, broke, no car, <laughs> not, like no help from family, nothing. And I remember having to hitchhike my way to school one time. One time I was, I didn't even have a place to stay. I was staying at a shelter and I had to take her, my daughter, from the shelter with me. We're walking to the daycare center that was paid for by the state. And then um, someone saw me, it was cold out. Someone saw me, pulled up, said, here, you should be carrying your daughter out here in the cold. Here's $20, get a cab. And that's what I did. Um, that was just one of many instances, but I keep thinking like, oh my gosh, that was, that was me. I was that kid. I was clueless. Um, and the only thing I had in my heart was that I wanted to do better. I didn't know how it was gonna happen. I just knew I, I wanted it to happen. 
and then that just kind of led me step by step on the path that led me here to where I am today. And believe me guys, like I said, that path is not straight and narrow. That path zigged and sagged. It went up and down. I fell in the ditch a couple of times. <laughs> I was dirty and gross and then I had to shower off and dust off and then I had to get back up and had to learn a few things, take a deep breath. Like it was crazy. It make for a good movie, right? <laughs> it was insane. Um, but it's pretty cool that I get to reflect on that and say, okay, oh my gosh, that's insane. If I can do that, what more can I do? And so that continues to challenge me and to push me in a different direction because um, I'm like, okay, this is what I've accomplished now. This is amazing. And I revel in those wins and those moments. And, but it makes me think like, oh my gosh, what more is out there? What more can I accomplish? What more have I not even thought of yet? You know, there's, you know, so there's like so much to, to really indulge in. Life is just full of miracles and exciting adventures. And I want to be a piece, I want to have a piece of that. So I hope that you guys get to experience your adventure and that you get to really create the life that you truly desire. And I mean that with all my heart. And I'm just glad I'm finally here where I, I love my life. I get to wake up when I want and I get to help all these amazing people in my life. And I get to surround myself with amazing coaches and mentors and people like Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi and then my own mastermind group like Wananda and Alcine, Eric and Pam, um, Angel, and um, oh, I can't even name all the people that have been a part of this amazing process and journey. And of course my baby girl, Jessica, she's, <laughs> she's the best. <laughs> So anyways, I could talk forever about this stuff. Obviously, I have a true passion about what I do and I have a passion about life. I just wanted to show, share with you and show you a little bit behind the scenes um, of how far I've come, where I am today, and that um, I couldn't be more blessed and more happy and more grateful to be here with you here sharing this story. And um, who knows, maybe you'll be the one next sharing your story too. So cheers, everybody. Till next time. <laughs>